guys ready? Good morning. Thank you for that praise band. That was wonderful. Wonderful. Well, if you're visiting, welcome to Norwalk United Methodist Church. This is a great day to be in God's house. We thank you for being with us today. The good news for today is that whether we are mighty or whether we are small, God is not only our helper but also our maker. Having created us in the divine image, God invites us to give ourselves fully. And in doing so, then we open the door for God to transform our lives and through us, transform the world. Imagine that. You're here today, transforming the world. Speaking of that, we have cookies out there. I didn't see very many people come in to get them early. Therefore, you have to stay after the service. 
And if you uh, notice some people that you haven't seen in a while or ever before, take them by the hand, take them to the cookies, and have a conversation with them. I didn't tell you that to waste my words. I told you that so that you will do it. That's the teacher in me. Do what I say. <laughs> Altar flowers from Dave and Karen Berry in loving memory of Dwayne Berry. Um, so we thank you for those. That's beautiful. Um, those who are currently on the prayer chain or wish to be added, please uh, meet in the rotunda for a brief meeting today. Um, we need to get the prayer chain going. One thing I want to be working on in the future is to get a uh, dial-up system so we can let you know when we're having cookies, like every Sunday, and remind you. And uh, also, I can have a separate uh, chain for the prayer. So when we get a call, we can put that call out to everybody with one phone call. Uh, when we have things going on at the church, we can send reminders, such as meetings, such as uh, special occasions, uh, those kinds of things. So we'll be working on that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there are any other announcements for this week. Am I missing anything? There was supposed to be another meeting. Debbie, did you have something you're meeting with today or was that last week prayer okay okay no I got it okay trying to keep up with everything and it challenges me other announcements that I'm missing we're really glad to have you all today and today we have a call to worship and it is written by Dr. Lisa Hancock so please join us in call to worship Stand as you are able, please, and join me. Family of God, as we gather today, Jesus asks us, Who do you say that I am? You are our Messiah, Son of the living God. Family of God, as we gather today, the Holy Spirit asks us, Who do you say that I am? You are Family of God, as we gather today, God the Father asks us, Who do you say that I am? You are our Creator, Provider, and Healer. Family of God, as we gather today, the Triune God asks us, Who do you say that I am? You are love. And let's join the praise band in singing, Come Thou Fount. Come Thou Fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing Thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me to song the Lord yes on it. Sung by flaming tongues of gold. Praise the mountain fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy 
joys and concerns this morning. You may be seated. Are there things you're thankful for? Are there needs in the community, in your families, in your life? Are there praises for God this day? Yes, Dawn. Praise God, we're glad to have you. Yes. Yes. God provides. God continues to provide. Are there others? Yes. Yes. Yes, that was very nice. Um, really working on the youth. So if you have youth in your family, uh, fifth quarter after the home games at the Kirschbaum's family, uh, Residents, and I can tell you there is no lack of good food, or even what would you call those things? We called them we called them uh, whoopie pies. What'd you call them? Whoppy pies. pies. <laughs> and my nephew used to call them hoopie pies. Um, so uh, you can't go wrong. Uh, send your kids, please. We're trying so much to um, create an atmosphere that gets these kids together and then once we get a group of kids then we can move with a with some sort of youth activities here and get that underway so we're trying real hard so if you have youth in your family send them to their their place fifth quarter and uh, it was a pleasure to meet with them the other night it was it was a double pleasure to be able to pray with them before we left so let's take care of our kids best we can. Others? Yes. Yes. Um, we also uh, spent a little time talking this morning about uh, UMCOR. At some point in time, there'll be an UMCOR special um, offering. And just to let you know, UMCOR um, has the people in place that are paid for by the Methodist Church. So when you give monies to UMCOR, they go directly to where they're needed. No money is taken up in, in, the, in the running of the, the business part of that. All proceeds go directly to the people. So the Pacific... Um, conference is already working in Hawaii. They've been there uh, probably for a longer than a week. Um, I'll try to get an update for you for next week. But um, so if, if you're feeling like you need to give to that event, UMCOR is a proper place to go. Um, they've also received a lot of money. Um, there is a, a Methodist church there that burnt to the ground. There's nothing left as is the whole town but they have enough money already to begin the rebuilding process from donations to their church from other churches. So that's always a, a, a good thing. So let's continue to keep Hawaii in our prayers. Um, let's keep our country in our prayers and our service people. Ruth? Uh-huh. Sending supplies, yes. Yes. So the work is being done for you on your behalf. Um, rest assured of that. Um, I did see where there were uh, three service members killed and a bunch injured in Australia uh, during exercises. So we need to pray for all of those on our 
list that are um, participating in the service right now. Um, those who are first responders in all areas with all the fires and the uh, tornadoes and the hurricanes and uh, what's about to come up from the Caribbean this year. Um, tis the season down there. So uh, there'll be many needs in, in those areas. So continue to pray for those, those things. Uh, continue praying for our school children and our schools at large for everybody involved uh, for safety. Uh, this week there was a, a student killed on a school bus. Um, here in Ohio, and uh, it little pe little child was sent to his first day of school and, and never made it, and doesn't get to come home. So let us pray for for that family and for those um, riding school buses for their safety. Uh, there's a lot of movement just in the state of Ohio in school buses. It's it's a tremendous amount. I know our school district, when I was in charge of that, uh, we did over 3,000 miles a day just in our school district. So uh, millions of miles each day of people put in harm's way. Are there others? Are there other things, other people, other issues? Yes. Yes. Yes, amen. Yes, Jen. Okay, we will do that. We will definitely do that. Unspoken request on your heart today. The need is much, my friends. We have many needs. Let us go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. Oh, holy God, we come to you this day with hearts of thankfulness. Thankfulness for the creation around us, the creation within us, and the transformations that you do with each one of us. Lord, we thank you that that you come into our lives, that you speak to our hearts, that you guide and direct us on our daily walk through the power of your Holy Spirit. So we ask for continued guidance, Lord, in all places, in all things, in all ways, Lord. And we thank you for this church where we can meet, where we can meet together physically, pray for one another, love on one another, where we can send out our message to those who cannot be here. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the healings that we're witnessing, people that we've been praying for, people that we know. And Lord, you continue to heal. You continue to be with us. And we continue to pray for all situations, Lord. We pray for those who are about to undergo operations, those who are getting treatments, those who are recovering from issues, Lord. We just give you thanks and praise for all you do. Lord, this day, we thank you that we can meet in this place safely to come before you to plead for our needs to love one another, to pray with one another. Lord, we just, we give you thanks for that. And this day, Lord, we, we continue to lift up all those in schools, all those about to begin school, all those participating in all those extracurricular activities, Lord. Lord, just be with us and keep us all safe. Protect us, Lord, from the evils that surround us. And this day, Lord, we, we give you thanks 
for this church in this community that strives to, to seek your face, to do your will, to love our neighbors. Lord, we just come to you at this time giving you thanks that we are able, able to come before you and to pray and to pray that beautiful prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture for today. Stand if you are able, please, for Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Jesus went to the territory near the town of Caesarea Philippi, where he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Some say John the Baptist, they answered. Others say Elijah, while others say Jeremiah or some other prophet. What about you, he asked them. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, answered Jesus, for this truth did not come to you from any human being, but it was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation I will build my church, and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then Jesus ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. You may be seated. Thank God for the Holy Spirit given to each of us. So the title today is, Who Do You Say I Am? Jesus and his disciples, they are, they're out on a road. They're on a road trip. They're in, on their way to Philippi. They're going through Caesarea, a bustling port city in Galilee. Jesus asked them, Who do people say I, the Son of Man is? They tell him that what, what people are saying, John the Baptist and, and these other prophets that they knew, they're having a hard time relating who Jesus Christ is. Some think he's Jeremiah, Elijah, John the Baptist. Because the prophets seem to be like Jesus was having tensions with authorities and suffering because of those tensions. It seems no one understood exactly what or whom they were witnessing. They've never seen someone or something like Jesus before. Then Jesus turns to his disciples and he starts to question them. But what about you? Who do you say I am? And, and, and praise God, one of them got it right. I mean, have you thought about the disciples as we go through the Gospels? They really struggled understanding and getting things right, did they not? And Peter, of course, um, impetuous Peter, he steps up and he gives the answer. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But what does it mean to, to call Jesus the Messiah, the Son of the living God? Even though Jesus seems satisfied with Peter's response, Peter doesn't even quite exactly know what it means to call Jesus the Messiah. 
at least not at this point. He's, he's not fully aware yet. And let's think about this for a minute. I mean, Jesus is not the Messiah that the people are expecting, is he? He, he, he is a healer. They weren't expecting a Messiah as a healer. They weren't expecting a Messiah as a people of a person of wisdom. They were expecting a Messiah that was going to come like a warrior, that was going to lead them through as their country to freedom from the Romans. Someone who was going to take down the oppressive powers that were around them. But Jesus was the one who was the purifier. He was the one who was going to burn away the bad. Jesus doesn't come as a warrior. Jesus comes as a poor peasant. Instead of being the one who, who purifies everything and runs everybody off and, and throws out all the bad and all the terrible influences and the unclean, Jesus sits with the unclean and has meals with the sinners and the tax collectors. My friends, that's totally opposite of what the people had in mind. He comes near to these people, these lesser thans. And he doesn't throw them out. And Jesus certainly doesn't attempt to topple or destroy the oppressive powers of the day. Think about this for a minute. Jesus was the one who they tried to destroy. Killed on a cross by Roman regime. And of course, Jesus knows he, he's not the kind of Messiah that Peter is expecting either. In fact, in the next couple of verses, he, he, if you go on from this story, he has to say to Peter, Satan, get behind me. Jesus is telling the disciples in the near future here that he's going to die on a cross in Jerusalem. And Peter tries to tell him that this can't happen. He said, you're the, you're the Messiah. You're supposed to come and save the world. But you see, he's not going to do it in the way that Peter's looking for it to be done. Not how anyone would think that would happen. So even as Peter gets it right, he kind of has it wrong, does he not? Now, I don't know about you, but I can kind of relate to that. Many of us know or think we know all there is about things. Some of us think we know all there is about Jesus. Many people think they have all the answers. My friends, we might have one of the answers, and that is that Jesus is the Lord, the living God, the Savior, and the Messiah. But what does that truly mean? Remember when Paul said to the Corinthians, For now we see only a reflection in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. You see, the Christian faith is, is a journey, an exciting journey, and, and getting to know on this journey exactly who God is. And then we pour our faith as we learn and we fall into practice of learning who Christ is. In Acts, Peter has, has to learn many things as it pertains to following Christ. You know, if you, if you look at Acts for a minute, Peter thinks only the Jewish people, those who are circumcised, those who eat the right kinds of foods, he thinks only those people can be saved. He has to learn that Christ died for everyone, that Christ died for all. Sometimes our church still needs to learn that lesson. Christ died for all. He came for all. It takes time to take that in, doesn't it? It also takes us time to, to learn to listen to that voice of the Holy Spirit 
and pay attention to what God is doing even in our midst. Think about it this way. When I met my wife, I liked her. I can tell you where I met her. I was in sixth grade, she was in fifth. We were at my neighbor's birthday party and we had a record player and we danced. And she was about a head taller than I was. I was attracted to her right away. I didn't know her very well. We've been married for 43 years. I learn more and more about her each day. Every day, really. It's the same way with our relationships, with our friends and our coworkers. At first, we know them in a shallow way. We were laughing the other day in a conversation. I talked about working in the coal mine, and I knew the guys by their hats because they would have different things on their hats. Then I would see them. Uh, we didn't have Walmart at the time, but we had Hearts and these other departments. You'd see somebody there at the grocery store. You, you could look at the face, but you couldn't remember the name. They didn't have their coal mining hat on. They were hard to recognize. So it was pretty shallow and superficial. And some of them, as we spent time working together, we became to know them a little bit better and better. Some of them I learned to know maybe too well because some of them got me in a little trouble. They were a little bit ornery. I think that same thing is true about Jesus. The more time we spend with Jesus, the more we are in ministry for him and, and with Jesus, the more we come to learn about Jesus. There's nothing more exciting and beautiful in all the world. So I want us all to ask ourselves this question that Jesus asked the, the disciples. Because that question is for you and I today. Who do you say Jesus is? And I don't mean what, what do the creeds say? What do those things that we recite say? I'm not asking you what other people told you about Jesus, but what do you say who Jesus is? And there's this thing, I, I, I'm going to guess I'm not alone in sensing a, a, a disconnection between our public confessions and our everyday actions. So I ask you to ask yourselves, this question, who do I say Jesus is? Do you do it with your life the way you live it? Do you do it within your relationships with others? How you treat others, how you look at others? Do you do it with your bank account? Do you do it with your time? And what about your energy? What about all the rest? Who do I really say Jesus is? Now, now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to put you on a guilt trip. I just want you to spend a little time, rather, to wonder together for a moment what we actually mean when we say with Peter that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Or that Jesus is Lord. Or that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. What does that mean for us personally? How does that affect our lives? Back, back in Matthew chapter 7... Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So could it be that we, we profess who Jesus is by whether we, or not we seek the will of the Father? Think about that for a minute. 
Do we seek the will of the Father? So it might behoove us to, to find out what the will of the Father is, shouldn't it? That's a question that we should answer. And I think there's no doubt Jesus makes it as clear as he can. What is the will is all throughout the Gospels. Professing that Jesus is the Christ, our Savior, the Messiah, is only the beginning step we take as Christians. What we do after we make that statement is what truly matters. And James, puts, James put it like this. He said, we show our faith by what we do. I would have to be the first one to admit, sometimes more often than I'd like, my faith might appear a little dim. Along with my mind, I might add, as I get older. And I think Jesus knows this. That's why, that's why Jesus had to come and die in such a dramatic way. That's why we are to confess our sins. That's why we are to turn from our sins and, and we're to turn toward Christ. And it's a daily, minute by minute, constant journey. So we should be constantly engaging his questions about who we say Jesus is. And not only in doing so, to discover Jesus anew as we discover ourselves constantly anew. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3, he says, I want to know Christ. Not that I've already obtained all this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of me. That begs another question. I come up with a lot of questions today, didn't I? Has Christ taken a hold of you? Then ask yourself this question. If Christ has done that for you, then why? To save your soul from hell? Yes. That, to conform to his own image? In this life? I think we should say yes to that. To use you to help save the world? That should be a yes. As he did with Peter, the real journey begins when we answer with Peter, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. The journey continues as we learn what it means to seek to live a life following Jesus Christ. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a great pastor and theologian. While he was sitting in the darkness of a prison cell in Nazi Germany, determined that Jesus' question to the disciples in our gospel lesson today for this morning was the central question for the church in his time in World War II in Germany. And he said it's a, a question that has to be asked to every generation to come. Who is Jesus Christ for us today? You see, he was asking it in urgency. And he was asking all the folks in Germany, if you're following Christ, what in the world are you doing? In other words, what does, it, what does the call to follow Jesus look like in this moment for each of us? What does it mean if we're following Christ when someone is hungry? What does it mean when we're following Christ if someone is thirsty, either physically or spiritually? What does it mean when someone is following Christ and they need clothing or they're in prison or they're sick? What did it mean to follow Christ during the COVID-19 pandemic? That was a challenge, was it not? 
And it's still a challenge. What does it mean to follow Christ during a time of racial unrest? When people post things on websites and then take guns and go in and kill people just to kill them. What does it mean to follow Jesus during this time of church unrest? Now that hits home, doesn't it? What does that mean? What does it mean when people are unemployed and you're you're following Jesus? What does that mean? And what do we say when someone passes? Or the doctor gives us news that we don't want to hear. Or our life seems to be falling apart. Who do we say Jesus is when we're faced with decisions that have no easy answers? When the storms of life are running over us, overwhelming us. When faithfulness means risking it all. Or taking a stand against a louder and seemingly more powerful force. What does it mean to say Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior, uh, my example? That Jesus is my brother or friend? What does it mean to say that Jesus is my life? When you do it in the song you sing? What does it mean to say Jesus is my teacher? The point today is that who we say Jesus is has everything to do with who and how we are and how we are to be. It reveals how we will live our lives, what we'll stand up for, guides our decisions and determines the actions we take and the very words that we speak. For the words we speak come from our heart. So where's our heart It'll disclose the depth of our motivation, of our commitment to following Jesus Christ. A motivation and a commitment that will be challenged. And it will be challenged each and every week when we come and hear the Word. Every time when we pick up our Bibles. Every time we're invited to take up the cross and to follow Jesus Christ. When Jesus asks us, who do you say I am? I don't think Jesus wants us to parrot back Peter's words. I think that's why Jesus pushes his disciples a little bit after Peter says that. And each of us, each of one of us has to answer for ourselves. It's not a theological exam or a Bible exam. It's merely an examination of our own lives and our own hearts. I love it in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one can boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That's where it comes from, my friends. Through the Holy Spirit. Just think about Peter. Peter was a fisherman. What did he know? He knew about mending nets, rowing boats, catching and selling fish. And he finds himself at this point in history when Jesus is revealed as the Christ. 
And Jesus makes it clear that such insight cannot come from human thinking. But it comes to us from the Holy Spirit as a revelation from God. Again, it is a gift of God. Praise God for the gifts that were given, my friends. And so this morning, Jesus asked you, and he asked me, who do people say the Son of Man is? Some may say a good teacher. Some may say a rabbi. Some might say he was a little delusional. He was out of his mind. But then Jesus looks us in the eye with this greatest love that he has for each of us. And he asks each one of us, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Question yourself today. What's your answer? I'm learning every day what my answer is. But when Jesus looks at you and says, who do you say I am? What will you say? Let us pray. Our rock of ages, be our fortress. Be our shelter in troubled times, Lord. Be our strength and our courage when we are afraid. Be our grace and our forgiveness when we find ourselves fallen short. Lord, be our inspiration. Be our guide when we strive to serve you and to serve your world fully. Today we pray in hope and gratitude. And we pray to you, Lord, Messiah, Son of God, this day. Amen. Amen. As the praise band moves forward, I ask the ushers to gather your tithes and offerings at this time. This is my 
daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And now stand for the doxology, please. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. As we offer our gifts this day, Lord, we confess that when confronted with Jesus' question, who do you say I am? Our answer sometimes is ambivalent at best. Even when we get the words right, we know our lives give a different answer. We turn away from suffering and oppression of your children. We accumulate wealth and prestige and ignore the poor and the powerless. You give and nothing is held back. And we give from our excess. Often resent and ask for more. Lord, help us to respond with the answer that comes from the center of our being. And that is demonstrated in our living. In Christ we pray. Amen. Shadows into your radiance by the blood I may enter 
your brightness. Search me, try me, and see all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. God, go from this place, led by the triune God who loves you, who saves you, and who sustains you, that in following we may be agents of goodness and blessing wherever we go. Amen and amen.